The bomb has exploded. What's up in luxury? Today I'm talking not only luxury, beauty, makeup, but also we're going to be talking about fashion, um, most specifically in relation of the new Hermes lawsuit chanel lawsuit and then we're gonna tone it down a little you know we're gonna lighten up everything by talking about dior's summer 2024 collection chanel levage 2024 collection tom for soleil again summer collection garland and other brands um but <laughs> let's go ahead and get started with the talk of the town welcome to the u.s land of dream and land of lawsuits <laughs> have to laugh about it. Well, Hermes has been sued here in California. I say here because I live in California and no, I'm not one of the plaintiffs. <laughs> Don't think about that. I, I haven't gone that far. But basically, two California residents, they have filed a lawsuit against Hermes for violating U.S. antitrust regulations. And what does that mean? Well, it's basically, I, by the way, I'm not a lawyer. I'm I'm just here sharing my opinion. Everything that I'm going to be talking about is allegedly, I think I have to put that word in, in big because um, anything that is put, you know, out for the public can be taken against someone and, you know, I don't want any trouble. Anyhow, here is just to a very kind of light conversation because I started kind of like a little bit of conversations here on YouTube through my community tab. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, I welcome you to do so because you can engage in conversations there pretty easy and in the most lighthearted way, as well as I posted my Instagram stories about this lawsuit just to get your feedback, your opinion about what's going on. But like I was saying, this lawsuit is based on the violation of the U.S. antitrust regulations, which basically covers that time purchase of one product to another, which is considered an abuse of market power. And this has to do directly with how to get a Birkin. And it's not secret. It's not something that it's hush hush that nobody knows. I mean, how many times someone, including myself, we have unboxed something from Hermes and we have called such purchase part of our journey to get that breaking bag because this lawsuit is directly in reference to the purchase of the Birkin. Basically, the plaintiffs, they are saying, well, we have been required to buy X amount of things from different areas of the brand in order and not guarantee to be offered a Birkin. Again, related just to the Birkin, they didn't name about the Kelly, there are the Constance. I know that Constance, it depends on which country you are at and even the year for the Constance to be considered a quarterback. We all know that in order to get a Birkin, you have to have a purchase history of other items from Hermes to show the love for the brand, not only wanting the Birkin bag, which has become more and more popular. And it's kind of like a, a status symbol for many people. To me, it honestly is just a bag. Do I like the bag? I absolutely love the bag. And I feel in a way, okay, the lawsuit may seem silly for some people, but there's a reason why the law exists, why this U.S. antitrust regulation exists, is to prevent the abuse to consumers. Now, whether they will win the case or not, I mean, who knows? It will definitely set a precedent no matter what, whether they win or they lose, because it just puts Hermes in the center of attention. Now, talking about my personal experience with Hermes, the first time that I bought from Hermes was back in Florida. And I think it was a fragrance. I think it was a Twilly fragrance. And then I bought a bracelet. Then I bought some blushes. And honestly, I was not interested at that time in the earbags at all. I didn't even, I went inside the boutique just asking for X things, different things that were not bags. Um, and I remember my essay at the time, she was super kind anytime that I was shopping at the boutique. She was so helpful, very kind and whatnot, but she was really hard to get a hold of. Anytime that I wanted to approach, just for the simplest thing, she would just kind of like, oh, perhaps it was too small of a sell for her that I was like, hey, you know, you want an appointment, you're taking away from my time, just pick your line outside and, you know, enter whenever you want and somebody else can help you, right? Um, pretty sure perhaps that's that thought process. 
And here is a key point about this lawsuit, which is that the sales at Hermes, they are based on commission except for the bags. So the sales associate for a piece of jewelry, we leave for a makeup, for a fragrance, they will get 3% for a piece of furniture, which is extremely expensive. For a piece of jewelry, they will get 3%. So obviously I have working commission before. Obviously you're gonna want to sell the things that are gonna give you commission, correct? I mean, that is completely normal, but to condition such purchases to be equal amount, double, sometimes triple amount, and in other countries like say Dubai, whew, way more and more higher to just get offered a Birkin bag. And most of the times it's not even the bag that you want in terms of shade, the hardware, the leather that you want, they will just offer whatever they wish to. If you take it, you take it. If you don't take it, you don't take it. Are you obligated to purchase all these other stuff in order to get the bag? I think that is the main question. And that's something that the judge will have to do a deep dive in. I think there's so many videos on the internet. There's so many things that come back up. Um, the process of getting a Birkin bag to be over one. And yet, like even if you keep purchasing and purchasing the stuff, you are not guaranteed to ever be offered a Birkin bag, ever ever so you you're going into this journey kind of blinded does someone force you to buy all these other items no so going back to my essay in florida well i moved back to california and i got another essay and he is amazing he's so sweet super kind and super helpful no matter how little is my purchase whether it's just the mascara it doesn't matter. He will help me no matter what. And he's always thinking about me. It's like, all of a sudden he texts me. He's like, you really want these? You still want it? I, I receive it. He sends me a picture. I say yes or no. And, you know, we proceed with the order or not. But I remember when I approached the boutique, he was the one assigned to my appointment. So I enter in and I ask him, do you have any bags? That was my question directly to the point, you know, um, you know, do you have any bags? I didn't say necessarily a Birkin or Kelly, just any bags. And he said, um, not really because it, we were during the holiday season. And he actually showed me a wallet thing that I honestly didn't want to. And I said, yeah, no, no, I'm not looking for a wallet. Then I proceeded to ask, well, how do I go about to get a Birkin bag? And then he looked at me and said, well, there is a wait list and usually that will take about two years. So then I look at him and said, well, can you help me start my wish list and that bags that I will be on the wait list for? And he said, yes, absolutely. He was so open to do so. He started taking notes on his phone, you know, of the things that I wanted. And then when I saw like how relaxed and easy going he was i was like you know what i'm looking for other things can you help me out and he's like yeah let's just go around the boutique so i told him i want you know i'm looking for these i'm looking for that we found a couple things and you know i was happy and then from there on i just have been continue shopping at hermes for items that i want now obviously you're not forced to buy these items you just have i mean like <laughs> obviously buy whatever you really want to buy and if the only target for you is to get that Birkin well perhaps you know just consider buying it on the second market is that unfair yes it is unfair because we all know that on the pre-love market even when you're finding new Hermes bags new Birkin bags uh, they're going to charge you two three, even four times more, or even more if we're talking about exotic leathers. So yes, it is completely unfair. I don't think um, whether one wins or the other one wins. I think, I mean, the plaintiffs at this point in time, I'm sure that they care less, literally less, if they are let or not banned forever to shop through on under mess boutique. They just, I'm sure, they just care less. It's like, why do I care for it? 
they can perhaps get a bag on the pre-loved market and that's it. They really care less. At this point in time, for them to have gone so far into to Hermes, literally, they just don't care. Now, what's happening with Hermes then? Are they going to start offering more bags, uh, regardless whether you have a history or not? I mean, like, who knows? I mean, in a way, hopefully they do, but we all know too, and if you are not aware Hermes bags, they are handmade. They are not mass produced. They are not something that comes from Zara or Sheen or whatever that they are just massive productions. So they take time to make. It's, it's a human stitching the bag. So it, they, they take time to make, but I think they have to rework their own system and they are guilty of something, of not being fair to their internal customers, meaning their own employees, because those commissions, they should be even steven on all of the items at the store, regardless of what they are. That's what to me makes them guilty because first of all, it, it's just hard for, I, I mean, I don't know how much they pay by the hour, but say they are paying them minimum wage or a little bit above minimum wage. And these people depend a lot on their commission. It's kind of like a waiter in a restaurant. They depend a lot on the tips that they receive from their clients and their service. So, yeah, I mean, it, it is a very hard topic. And if they don't make the commission equal, obviously they are pushing their internal clients, which again, are their client advisors to encourage their clients to just shop of other items, even perhaps if the client doesn't really want it. And, and I know certain people have this personality that, you know, they feel afraid that they will never get offered a Birkin bag and therefore they will buy whatever, you know, their client advisor shows them. And then they are stuck with all these items that they have never wanted. Um, I know some people, they go into that pressure. I particularly do not. I have declined offers of many other things that are very popular nowadays, like the Evelyn bag. I dislike so much that bag, you know, and they offer it to me in gold, the perfect size and whatnot. Could I have resell it? Yeah, but I didn't care to do so. I just didn't care to spend my money on something that I didn't want and then hope to resell it. I, I didn't want to do that. In fact, told my essay, you know, I offer it to someone that really wants the bag. That, that's what I told him. And he looked at me, he's like, that's very kind of you. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to enjoy it. I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to even give it to anybody. So yeah, better that it goes to someone that really loves the bag. And definitely Hermes needs to stay on implementing the waiting list or create kind of like this, again, special order kind of system. I think that could be something good to do. So it, because this is this topic is just so polarizing and of all what I'm reading right here a lot a lot of your responses about this lawsuit one of you commented honestly Hermes requires you to spend a lot of money just to get a bag shady business um well it's left at your discretion if you want to spend that money on all those other goods but it's kind of like a hush hush secret that is not really a secret that you have to have a certain spending um to get offer a bag and although there has been some situations and some other content creators they have shown a bag that it was offered like the first time that they walk into an Hermes boutique will that start happening now that the lawsuit is still in place <laughs> we'll have to see about that and also i mean thinking about these bags being handmade most of the bags are allocated to the mothership boutique in france um, because well at the end of the game the brand is french so it makes total sense but even in france you have to go through a lottery system to get a leather appointment in order to even perhaps, you know, being able to get the back of your dreams or a like to the back of your dreams, perhaps not the back of your dreams. I'm like, it's such a headache. Another one of you said, I think it's ridiculous. They have a right to structure their business as they wish. I mean, fair enough, but unfair to other people. 
I don't know. I mean, it, it is definitely a hard topic. Same thing. I mean, like I do have businesses and yes, you know, I structure my business the way I want to, uh, but there's always that respect between clients and, and the business and my employees. <laughs> it is just such a hard topic. Another one of you said, wow, I would like to hear your thoughts about it. Well, here I am <laughs> sharing my thoughts. I mean, as an Hermes client, I do not own a Birkin bag. I would love to do not have to do the pre-spend to get the bag of my dreams. And I absolutely will keep shopping from Hermes because they have excellent quality products. I have on my wish list several things, not only shoes. I have a beautiful ring that it costs like... <laughs> enormous amount of money um i i will have to save at least a year and a half to be able to purchase that ring but i mean aside the point i would love to own a hermes leather jacket they are just so well made you see like with for example chanel i shop a lot at chanel i pretty much have been able to get every bag that i wanted it exception for a couple here and there and I still shop all their other stuff. I do not only focus on their, you know, on the classic flaps, for example. I also shop their seasonal bags, their ready to wear, their shoes, their jewelry. I mean, like, I keep shopping because I do have a great experience and I go out of the boutique happy because I got what I wanted. You know, I, I save my money. I really want to get these and... Yeah, it it definitely, it just leaves sour taste in a way because it's like, okay, I feel like I'm going, trying to beg for a bag and it perhaps is not even the fault of your essay. Perhaps it comes from above that they have certain bags and there are these clients that they shop so much. And, you know, like I'm, for example, the boutique that I shop at, it is a, it's from a very competitive market. I mean, like it's Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills, <laughs> you know, it's like, not, it's not only Beverly Hills, it's Beller there, Malibu, all the people that have, you know, they can buy so many things, you know, and, it, and, and you're competing with those clients. It does make the game very unfair. Someone else says, people whining for not being allowed to buy something unnecessary, pathetic. Um, yeah. There are definitely better things to worry about. I mean, wealth is not that mine by a bag, by a piece of jewelry, by the way you dress. Um, you know, ultimately, health is wealth. I mean, I don't want to bring necessarily this topic, but, you know, it happens to be that when I'm recording this video, um, the Princess of Wales just announced that she's undergoing cancer treatment and... You see, like, she can have all the money of the world, right? And all the luxury that she wants. And yet, if you don't have health, you don't have wealth. So definitely, in a way, it is pathetic to be complaining about these things. But on the opposite side, if a regulation to protect consumers has been put in place, there is a reason why. And therefore, I mean, it's not necessarily logical, but... If a consumer feels that X company is violating those regulations, well, that's why the law exists, right? I mean, like I said, it's a hard topic to talk about. I agree with the lawsuit. I think Hermes are ridiculous. I fully support this lawsuit. Hermes deserves this as they do discriminate. Uh, wow. Of all the life and death matters to fight for, it's an interesting avenue to pursue. Definitely, yes. I'm shocked that it took this long to happen. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Um, and you know what? With these kind of lawsuits, class act lawsuits, um, other people that want to join, they can join if you're in the same state. I don't know if you're of the state you're able to because, well, this is a U.S. regulation. So, uh, again, I'm not a lawyer. All of what I'm saying is allegedly and whatnot, but I think anybody that is, you know, in, in, that lives in U.S. and is a U.S. citizen, I, I assume, I guess, and that feels that they had been um, affected by this business practice, 
and they should be able to join the claim. Uh, would I do so? <laughs> I don't think so, but if somebody else wants to do it, they can. They can sell to whom they want to sell. Uh, absolutely, yes. And and I think here again is just talking about that they are tying one product to the other. I mean, like for example, you don't need a a coffee. Okay, you may need a coffee cup to drink a coffee, right? But you don't need necessarily a saucer to use the coffee cup. That is exactly what the U.S. antitrust regulation protects: is the sales of something in order for something to work. That but that is not necessary. Like for example, you can say, "Well, a twill is necessary." No. A tool may be necessary for someone else to do not get dirty the handle of a bag, but to me, for example, is completely unnecessary. Does it make sense? It's unfair for those that do want to purchase. Gatekeeping a purse is just stupid. Absolutely. Free the Birkins. <laughs> Free the Birkins. <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy luxury bags, but I have seen it happen with makeup and it's kind of unfair. Um, I don't know necessarily about which makeup, but you know, if, if you're here, please comment down below which makeup brand or makeup items you, you're thinking of. They are allowed to sell to whoever they want. It makes them special. Um, I think... What makes them special, it is the craftsmanship because they are handmade and the heritage. I mean, we're talking about more than, what, 100 years and is still a family-owned business. It's not under no umbrella of any kind. So I think that is what is, makes them special. Uh, we as consumers will make them even more special if we keep buying and showing our stuff because we are literally, you know, when we carry the name of the brand or the look of the brand, we are little billboards going around marketing for such brand. So ultimately, uh, consumers, we should always be very special to the brand and be treated fairly. Okay, friends, Chanel has won a lawsuit against what goes around comes around credit mark infringement. So basically, I mean, in summary, I will be leaving links to articles if you want to be informed. Um, the lawsuit from Hermes, it's in public record, so you can, you know, get a copy of it if you are interested. And you know, just have a quick, nice reading about it. But yeah, so basically with Chanel, what's going on here is that what goes around and comes around, they offer an authenticity certificate per se. Again, everything is alleged, right? But basically, um, they offer the authenticity certification of Chanel products. But what Chanel um, basically is saying is that, well, you do not work for Chanel you are not a Chanel representative, you cannot provide, give an authentication of any of these bags or items sold by Chanel because you have not been part of the people who manufacture these products. You don't work for Chanel. So even, um, and in a way, it may seem unfair um, I understand Chanel in that sense because you are the one who knows who made, who was your manufacturer, who was your craftsman that did that bag and you are the only one that is able to determine if such item is or not authentic. And, you know, interesting fact right here, I did buy a Chanel 19 bag pre-love, um, almost brand new, and I have taken it countless times to the Chanel boutique and always I have always received compliments and they always refer to it that has been the most beautiful caramel tone that I have seen before one day I commented to my essay and asked her hey you know what I bought this bag pre-love and it does have not a code but actually you know the new chips is there a way that you can scan it and see if it's authentic and she told me, it looks authentic, I cannot scan it. That was her answer. So not even at Chanel, you can get the authentication unless you send it to the spa. I'm sure if you send the items, I, I mean, like, I think it could happen with Hermes. It could happen actually even with Rolex because I had asked actually um, a client advisor at Rolex and he said, well, if I buy 
a pre-loved Rolex, would you be able to let me know if it's authentic? And he told me, not me, I cannot do it. But if it goes to repairs, then from repairs, they will notice whether it's authentic or not. And if it's authentic, they will just do the repair, we will bill you for it, and you will go with peace of mind that the item was authentic. And if it's not authentic, they will send it back and let you know that it's not authentic. Does it make sense? But they, they are not going to tie it in with saying, this is a certification that this product is authentic. It is a tricky situation, mostly for those that are looking to purchase certain items that are very hard to find from the pre-loved market. And, um, you know, when you're buying pre-loved, it is what it is. I mean, you can go and try to get um, authenticity, certification from i don't know zico which actually zico just came out i think on the washington post um because of her services but you know <laughs> again she's offering these services and oh, i don't know hopefully chanel doesn't come back for her but uh you, you know you, you can go to different type of platforms to get a authentication of these ex luxury items but nobody but the person, the manufacturer of the item can tell you if it's real or not. So, I mean, buying pre-love, it always comes with a risk no matter what. Okay, friends, let's move to more likely topics, starting first with Dior Summer 2023 collection. As per usual, we do have two eyeshadow queens. I told you, friends, you see? Lavender is big for the season and also a little bit of this kind of minty light bluish minty kind of shade and it is the Quint in 063 pink lilac and also there's a warmer tone eyeshadow Quint in 61 poppy coral. Both of them are really pretty. I think shades that we have seen before definitely but shades that are so useful. Uh, as per usual, I review everything Dior Chanel here on my channel, <laughs> so I will be reviewing these products. Um, the corally one, it, I love the yellow tone that is on the coral palette, but I think perhaps this palette, they could have just condensed it in one palette. If they could have put that yellow and the coral alongside with the lilac and the aqua and then throw perhaps kind of like a brown sandy kind of tone. I mean, is it necessarily two queens? Uh, perhaps not. Do I'm excited? In a way, yes. In a way, it's like, okay, at least they are playing around with colors. Then from their backstage collection, they are bringing two new shades of lashes in poppy coral and pink lilac. I told you, I told you the pop of color this year. Um, this, this is spring and summertime is lilac and... It's going to come either in a mascara, in a blush, in an eyeshadow, I mean, you name it, in lipstick. Doesn't matter, you you will see a Layla coming in. So these are fun, you know, that they act with your pH. So I'm sure that the lilac is not going to show really like lavender, but rather a little bit more pinkier, cool tone pink. And then the other shade though, it looks a lot like the one that they already have, I think. No, it's not rosewood, it's coral something. I don't remember, but um, very alike. I mean, it's good. <laughs> then they have a couple new shades of the Lip Glow too. There's also a new Dior Skin Forever Glow Maximizer in a limited edition. I'm using rosy one today, but um, they are going to be launching this limited edition shade Nude. Why is limited edition? I think this could have been perfect to keep it on the line. I think it, it's actually necessary because they have a pinky tone, then they have the peach, they have the gold, but they don't have something nude. So I think they are just not taking advantage of the moment to keep that specific maximizer, glow maximizer in nude. But I'm interested on that too. There's going to be a Dior Attic Lip Tint. Those are great too. Nail polishes in that minty, almost bluish tone and then yellow tone too. I, you know, my friends, I paint my nails at home. I love to do so. Um, but I don't know, these specific nail polish shades, they are not a you know so attractive to me <laughs> so 
So definitely I'm going to pick up some of the items, uh, most likely the lipsticks, the two blushes, and the two eyeshadow queens. Let me know if you're interested on any of these items from your summer 2023 collection. Now going into Chanel's Le Beige 2024 collection, which is technically the year summer collection. Um, so we are going to be seeing a lot of new products from them. They are adding actually five new shades on their Le Beige foundation. One very light, one that is on the medium tone, and then two on the deeper side, which I think it's it's great. It's great that they are really working on the shade selections. Then there are these three mix of blush, bronzer, and I don't know if setting powder or highlighter. I mean, these are promo images. And Andrea Lee, she went to a Chanel event and showed a sneak peek of these powders. And they seem to be, it says here XXL. So I think they are extra large, which is great because if you have three different products within one palette you want to make sure your brush that you're able to put any brush on it and really work through it i actually like all of them because the lighter one has more of like a peachy blush the medium tone has more of a pink blush and then the deep one it has more of like a berry blush all of them very pretty i think all of them are beautiful i'm most likely i will get all three even though i don't definitely i do not need them <laughs> whatsoever my goodness me and then with this collection we also going to see a addition i don't know if they are two new shades on the noir allure mascaras one is definitely that beautiful lilac tone I'm telling you lilac is everywhere <laughs> and then a red one now on the red one i'm not sure because i know the black one has a red undertone so that it could provide like an intense black but definitely the lilac is one of them. I'm interested in that. And then there is an eyeshadow palette, Ombre Essentiel. And this color story is very interesting with this gorgeous chartreuse shade that looks to be metallic. Same thing with the golden taupey tone right next to it. I think um, the color story is really beautiful. There is a peachy tone, lighter, seems to be a matte shade. And then kind of like warm reddish cranberry perhaps tone I, I think this is a very interesting palette a very interesting palette and I have seen another sneak peek of another palette too but I don't know exactly to which collection it belongs to so I don't want to you know get you confused and bring it in right here um also we're going to see single eyeshadows from Chanel a lot of them different shades I mean you have here the gorgeous lilac, they're all gonna come during summertime, okay? And be ready if you're looking for any of these ones. So some of them are matte. So Lila's Poudre. Um, then there is this kind of peachy tone rose charnel. The Blanc Perle. White is always gorgeous for a pop of brightness, mostly if it has that pearly effect. Yeah, it says Un Blanc Transparent. So a transparent white there's gonna be so many to choose from then there seems to be a new product from chanel the hydra beauty micro serum levels which is a product for a hydrating product for the lips let's talk about tom four and the air soleil 2024 collection you see i i like these kind of teat concise small kind of collections i, I would love for all the collections to be like this <laughs> Definitely. So there's an eyeshadow quad and it is available right now at certain retailers. My essay has contacted me. He told me I have it. So um, I should be having my review fairly soon for you on the collection itself. If I find it anywhere on the websites, I will be linking it on the description box below. So this is the Emerald Dusk Eyeshadow, which has some glistening kind of effect. It doesn't say if it's the creme formulation or not. It seems like it's not, but I'm thinking perhaps it's the formulation that we have seen in Metal Last, which if that's the case, oh well, that gets me excited. Then four new Ultra Shine Lip Shades. 
Um, these are very reddish in tone and perhaps nothing that I'm just like so excited except for the very the lightest ones. And then the Soleil Glow Highlighter in Nude Sand that absolutely yes because the formula from um, Tom Ford's highlighters are incredible. <laughs> are incredible. And then a liquid lip blush in golden glitter. So the blush lipsticks from Tom Ford are those that um, they come in a bullet, they are transparent, and they usually have gold flecks. So this is kind of like the melted liquid version of them. <laughs> um, one thing that I'm seeing right now from the packaging, I wish they have a bigger doe food applicator that they will feel more like a lip oil and that they will have no scent or if anything, the scent of the Tom for Soleil Blanc perfume that, you know, my friends, it is my go-to during summertime, but yeah other than that i i think this collection is petite concise but very beautiful definitely one of my favorite collections for summertime very concise i don't have to give too much thought to it just to get it right going quickly into guerlain uh, we have some new guerlain spring meteorites you know how much i love the meteorites but i'm gonna be honest guerlain i'm a little bit tired about you just bringing gorgeous tin cans but nothing new except the, there's one new shade that number 01 that has all pretty much white pearls it's called pearly white you can use that as a finishing powder or as a highlighter i mean if it's translucent and more of a luminizer then yes but other than that on my skin tone a white meteorite it's it's not going to do it i know this is a reformulated meteorites with 95% naturally derived ingredients I get it and I hope they haven't messed up the formula but I don't know if I'm like so like yay I want it I mean perhaps I will get 03 or 04 just you know because it's a reformulation and to try it and perhaps I'm going to be using it on a trying of new hot new makeup releases something along those lines but if I'm sincerely excited, I will be sincerely excited if they will, like if this is the permanent packaging to begin with, that they are permanent shades, all of them. And aside to the two, three, four that we, you know, all know, you know, have more options too. I mean, do we need all these meteorites? No, I have a ton of meteorites. And in fact, I have been, like, I, I could say, I'm thinking and thinking that I need to sell all these products because I just have... Um, not to brag, but I just have way too much makeup because of the nature of my job being a makeup reviewer. But yes, friends, those are that YSL. We know that they are quote unquote kind of rebranding, not really rebranding, but just kind of like getting a lift up and they have reformulated their volume shine lipsticks. I have already in my review swatches, all the details of them here. Um, yeah, they, the Volume Shine lipsticks, they are not anymore. Now they are called the Love Shine and it's also a reformulation and they do not carry the same scent as they used to, sadly. <laughs> I know, sadly, but they don't have any other scent either. So they are unscented. And then last but not least, the Sephora Savings Event is coming starting April 5th. It's around the corner, friends. So we need to get ready with, let me know what type of content you want to watch here. If you want some recommendations, what is helpful to you? Do you want me to do separate videos of like makeup, fragrances, skincare, or like everything together, just like top, I don't know, tw top 24, perhaps we are in 2024. I don't know. Give me ideas. What it serves you, what it makes the best way to really shop the sale because we know, I mean, like, as you know, Rouge members, they get the 20% off while others, they get 15% off and 10% off. And there are so many other sales that are really good. Like currently right now, Bloomingdale's is having an amazing sale. I will be having some of my makeup link on the description box below and you will see there's some great discounts, Bloomingdale's, Ulta and whatnot that you can get more um discount like even i think beautylish too is having their gift card event i know it's not technically a discount because they are giving you a card to be spent afterwards 
Uh, it's not bad if you really want to get some items, but yeah, I, I will be leaving details and sales that I find also in the description box below. And that's why it's super important. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead, do so. Make sure you have that post notification bell on so you don't miss any of my uploads, but also any of my post on my community tab because right there I let you know when there were, there's a new sale, a backstock alert. I mean, whatever is the case, we get to communicate that way as I mentioned it at the beginning of the video as well as if you're on Instagram. I mean, that's a very easy way for me to communicate with all of you through my stories too. Come and follow me there. And if you're on TikTok, I mean, hey, why not? Help me, help me out by growing there. But yeah, let me know if you're interested on any of these very sought after summer collections from luxury brands what do you think about the lawsuits both from Hermes, Chanel let's just continue that conversation on the comment section down below I love always to hear from you and thank you so much to all of you who participated with your comments whether on the community tab whether on Instagram thank you so much to make the conversation more rich and yeah let's just stay in communication if you like this video please give it a thumbs up share it with family and friends and if you are not done watching my content well I will be leaving a couple other videos at the end of the screen that I'm sure you're going to love. Until the next time, I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.